they had an urgency about them. There's something very topical. So the exhibition Beyond the Cape is really looking at those artists who were inspired by comics, but in different ways. They're about the environment, politics, race relations. There are many artists like Liechtenstein and Warhol who are influenced by, uh, by comics, by pop culture. But this you'll find are artists who really are telling a story that's sometimes quite deep, quite dark. Carrie James Marshall is looking at the streets of Chicago. William Wiley's tapestry is looking at the shooting of a man who police thought he was pulling out a gun, but in fact he was pulling out his wallet. I'm finding right now in this moment, just kind of seeing my work against these other artists' work, is that they actually are speaking clearly without holding back about what is actually important to them and what's actually happening in the period of time that they are living. My name is Mark Thomas Gibson. I'm originally from Miami, Florida. I am an artist. I'm also an assistant professor at Temple University, Tyler School of Art. I kind of play with pop culture. I play with comics. I play with history. I play with like a little bits of everything. This book had a lot to do with this idea of utopia. Once I actually start engaging with the practice of drawing, then I start to formulate whatever my actual answer is about that subject. In the case, this one was utopia. And so by the end of it, I actually come to an answer for myself. And I don't think I could actually find that type of answer any other way. Every page is an individual drawing, 350 of them that tell the narrative of my main character. I use, like, as my protagonist, a werewolf character, which is the idea of someone who has been traumatized, but then now is a traumatizer. I, I think about that a lot in America, how we have a lot of that that kind of continuously seems to happen, where people become traumatized by either uh, being economically oppressed or being seeing a loved one murdered or seeing culture act and respond to them as another when they are actually a part of the fabric of this country. And then that gets passed on like to your kid, it gets passed on to your community. Some of them become paintings, some of them do not, most of them do not. But in this case, this would later become Library 1 and 2. I wanted to kind of show an area that had been lived in and kind of overgrown in thought. My main character in this narrative that this comes from don't really know even what time period it is that he's in. So you have like a sword and kind of a hilt and a kind of a spear, but you have like books that are kind of contemporary. So there's Utopia, of course, and then there's Beloved, you know, by the great Toni Morrison. I think about books that I've read growing up that told me something or made me think about relationships around slavery, relationships about American expansionism, all these things that we kind of think about when we're talking around America as these kind of canons of like, who are we, where are we? Part of what I figured out in this whole utopian thing was that it really kind of comes down to communication. So that we have to actually work with each other to actually navigate what is that we, what we want. This exhibition, I think, is yet another good example of what we have been pretty good at here, and that is to break the boundaries between these silos of art forms, where you have the graphic novel, the comic, and you have fine art. Well, here you have this sort of blending of the two. And it was kind of hard because when you would have that kind of influence in your life and you would go to an art school per se, they'd say, oh, that's not art, and they would throw that aside or kind of demean it or demote it. Many people throughout history actually worked within illustration, worked within political art, worked within caricature. It's, it's really kind of embedded in art practice. And if you go all the way back to Lascaux and look at those like caves, I mean, there's some caricaturism kind of going on in that as well. So the way in which we kind of think through narrative and sequential art, um, it's always been present.